What's up YouTube? Georgia Silver Hunter back and today we will be doing a $400 mixed coin roll hunt and this mess you see in front of you is those $400. I went around to a couple of Wells Fargo's over the weekend or on Saturday before they closed I should say and I was able to get $140 in dimes, uh, $200 in quarters, and $60 in nickels. And as you can see we've got a smattering of customer wrapped, bank wrapped, we've got a little bit of everything. Some Loomis, some Brinks, we've got it all. So I can't wait to get into this. Uh, we will be doing them in this order. We'll hunt the dimes, then we'll hunt the nickels, and we will end with the quarters. This looks like it's going to be a ton of fun, and if you like mixed coin roll hunts and even looking at those customer wrapped uh, coins, this is the hunt for you. So let's jump into it. So there it all is, maybe a little better organized. We are, like I said, going to start with these dimes. But before we jump into them, I did want to mention that I did do a short uh, while I was out hunting these particular coins. Uh, I did ask the tellers at the first Wells Fargo I was in if they had any uh, half dollars. And sure enough, they did. Like I said, if you've seen the short, this is a little bit of a repeat for you. But they had five 40% Kennedy half dollars in one of the teller trays. Now... They may look a little nicer than they did in my short, and it's because I brought them home and dumped them in some Easy S just to clean them up a little bit, make them sparkle again, because at the end of the day, these are 40% half dollars, no numismatic value in them, there was no uh, no DDOs, no, you know, nothing like that that I had to worry about, so did clean them up just a little bit, but I wanted to ask you guys, should I throw those in the silver chest, or should I just throw them in my stash, because at the end of the day, they weren't found coin roll hunting per se. They were found at the bank. So what do I do? Do we put them in the treasure chest for the end of the year or do we keep them separate? Let me know. All right, now let's get into these dimes. So we are just going to silver hunt these dimes today. Uh, my last dime hunt, I actually did go through about half of what I had looking at each and every dime for the handful of errors and varieties that there are out there and came up pretty short. Didn't find anything. A couple of proof reverses, I think on the 69 and 70 I found. Not a ton of value there. So I'm going to skip that today just simply because I have so many coins to get through. And uh, what we'll be doing is just edge hunting these things for silver. And you do that just like you do with half dollars. You're just looking at that edge for uh, that solid gray uh, line. And uh, I'll put these aside. I do tend to go through them, kind of spread them out just to make sure I don't miss a proof because that proof will still have that really big mirrored finish and it will be really easy to spot when you spread it out on this black mat. Um, by the way, I do have these mats available in my store at GA Coins and Collectibles. If you're looking for a coin roll hunting mat, make sure you check that out uh, if you need one. So uh, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and just go through these Kind of like you're seeing here. I only had two that were bank wrapped, so those will be the last ones that we open that way. It's a 1965. The rest of these are all going to be uh, customer wrapped, and uh, I'll just be laying them out and going through them. And uh, if we're not finding things, I'll speed the video up, add a little music for your enjoyment, and if we're finding stuff, we'll slow down and have a look at it. So with that, let's get going.
All right, well, this is the last roll of dimes. And as you can see, even in probably fast forward, this hasn't been terribly exciting. I have had to slow down a little bit because we've had some pretty disgusting rolls of dimes. And I've also fumbled some rolls, which made it a little bit harder to edge hunt. When they've been like sitting in water and they get all like, I don't know, kind of white and murky and I don't know what the moldy looking. It's really hard to just see the edge and know whether or not it's silver. So I had to stop and look at a few of them. But uh, this is pretty typical of my dime hunts. I don't, I don't find a lot of silver dimes. I was hoping to with this number of customer wrapped because I know a lot of people have lots of luck with uh, customer wrapped dimes. Just we didn't today. So with that, let me go ahead and get these cleaned up. Um, I'm going to get these re-rolled and we're going to move on to our nickels. All right, so we're going to move on to those nickels. And I did want to take a moment just to pause here. If you guys have been watching my nickel videos, you know that I'm trying desperately to finish out this 1938. I know it says the 2003 book, but I've added the extra pages to get me all the way to, uh, I think I've got all the way through 2023 in this book. And the only thing I'm missing from the latter half is our San Francisco proofs, which I don't intend to find all those in circulation, but we are missing just a handful of nickels. It's hard to see in this because you can see through the holes. Just a handful of early Jefferson nickels uh, to finish out this book. And uh, to make things easy for me, I've actually condensed it down to this little cheat sheet. So we're missing, I don't know what it is, about 10. Let's see, two, four, six, eight. I think it's like nine nickels to finish out the full run of Jefferson's minus the proofs. So what we're going to do here, uh, just to keep things moving, is open a couple of rolls of nickels here live on camera and just see if anything crazy jumps out at us. Like that was a little metal detector find. I'm going to check just a couple of these to see if they might be war nickels uh, or if any buffaloes jump out at us. Nickels take a little bit longer to hunt than... Uh, the dimes, because we do want to check every single date. Uh, I do have in that document, the description below this video and all my other ones, all the varieties and errors that I'm hunting for. And so we want to make sure we look at all the years and mint marks to make sure we don't miss anything. And you'll see, I've got something loaded here. Somebody cheated me by a washer. So apparently somebody's got a machine or they desperately needed to save a nickel one or the other. I'm going to hope it was an accident, but who knows these days. So nothing crazy jumping out in there. And uh, let's do like two more, three more. Let's do three more if we got room here. Um, I did finally earlier this year, or maybe it was late last year, come across some V nickels in a nickel hunt. That was pretty exciting. I do find buffaloes from time to time and war nickels are pretty elusive. I find, and of course these just won't stand up for me, um, I find war nickels from time to time. So I might find one war nickel in every, you know, three, four, five boxes. I know there are other coin roll hunters that find war nickels all the time. I'm just not one of them. And when you see something colored like that, you desperately want it to be a war nickel, but that one was not. The other things we're looking for is really any nickel that's uh, 1938 to 1959. Those are the kinds of things that we're going to call finds in here. They're, the last time nickels were kind of pretty low mintage, so we hang on to all those. They're a good source of copper if you're a copper hoarder. Um, so we do hang on to those as well. And I am just making an absolute mess here. So apologies to you guys. This is the last roll I'm going to do on camera. Then I'll go back and I will only bring you in for our finds because this would take forever. Come here. So nothing jumping out at me here like a buffalo or anything. So let me go back through these. I'll hit the rest of these nickels and bring you in as we find interesting nickels to talk about. So I'm getting into rolls. I think it's 14 and 15 if I'm doing my math right. I've only got one more customer wrap roll and I've only opened, I think, three or four of the uh, bank wrap rolls. It's been really, really slow since our gigantic washer find, I think in roll number two or three or wherever that was. But this roll has a couple of interesting things in it. I kind of got it out of the wrapper and a couple of things jumped out that weren't supposed to be there. The first foreign, it is a 10, I'm, I'm guessing that's pronounced Bonnie. Bonnie from Romania, 2017. No idea what that's made of. Probably some sort of uh, nickel-plated copper or potentially steel. Don't know what it's worth, but we'll look that up before the end of the video. 
And right next to it was another one, or maybe not the exact one, but it was a 2016 Romania. Yep, 10 Bonnie, so two of those. And there was something else that looked a little tiny down here on the end. So finally, we're making a little bunny with our misstuffed rolls, and it's sticky. We've got a 2002 Philadelphia Roosevelt dime. So again, not great finds when you're hunting nickels for album fillers and silver and that sort of thing, and buffaloes and V-nickels, but it's something. So we're getting into those bank-wrapped rolls. The customer wrap, like I said in the last clip, really not all that great, but uh, we've got rolls 17, 18, and 19 in front of us, and I just kind of was spreading them out to see if I found any buffaloes. And one little guy jumped out at me as a keeper, and it's this 1946. Let's see what we got here. It looks like a Philadelphia. It's in terrible shape, but it's our first 40s or 50s nickel on the hunt, so we'll hang on to it. 1946 Philly. So I was getting the very next roll out. So this would have been, I think, roll 20. And again, I was spreading it out. And sure enough, just kind of quickly looking for some edges that look interesting. We've got ourselves another 1946. Now let's see here. Did we get a Denver? We did not. Now the 46 is also one of those years that it could be a Henning nickel. And I did uh, weigh my last one. There's a couple of ways you might know if you've got a Henning nickel. And those are just, those were nickels that were faked. Um, there's only a few years that they were faked. I don't have it in front of me, but I know 46 was one of those years. And uh, they typically weigh more, like 5.4 grams. So being under 5 grams, we know that is not going to be a fake nickel. The other one is the R in Pluribus has a little loop in it on some of them. And this one, obviously, in the loop is right there. So no loop there. Let me see. I've got my list here on the computer. Those Henning nickels are 1939. 1944, 46, 47, and 53. So we will definitely keep our eyes out for those. So I opened rolls 21 through 25, and I'm on roll 23. And this hunt has finally turned around a little bit because we have found a little bit of war nickel silver here. It's worn, it's ugly, it's a Philadelphia. You can tell that war nickel from that mint mark above the Monticello building instead of it being next to it. Let's see, we've got ourselves a 1943. And of all of the war nickels I need to find in circulation, this is not one of them. I find this more than any other war nickel in my area. I still need, let's see here, the 42S, 44D, 44S, 45D, but I continue to find this 43P. Now there is a 43 over two error. This isn't it, but you would actually see the two and the line here, and I think there's even a double I, if I can get the I under there. I don't think we're going to find that here either. This one's really worn. Even if it was, it wouldn't be worth too much money, but you know what? I will take a hunk of silver considering we haven't found much else in this hunt so far. We're on roll number 26, and this one came up reverse facing in the telltale sign. It's, that an, it's an older one is the fact that we've got an S mint mark on the reverse, which means it's something we're definitely going to want. Let's see, we've got ourselves a 1941 San Francisco. I do know this one has a repunch mint mark or an over mint mark, so let's just check that out. So I see a little bit of gunk in here, but I don't know if that's just some leftover metal or if that's what we're looking for. I don't think it is, but I'm going to go ahead and check my uh, cherry picker's guide and see if this looks like the image in the book. So the 41S has a large mint mark and a small mint mark, and I think ours looks more like the small. I'll put some pictures of each up here. There is a repunch mint mark variety. There's not an image on uh, the cherry picker's guide of that one. I don't think we've got that either, though. It says that it's a secondary S as evidence to the south, which we don't see here. And uh, there's an inverted mint mark, and I'll put a picture of that up next to this one, and I'm not sure we've got that one either. But uh, if you think it's any of those, let me know in the comments down below. So we are on our very last roll, and we're not done finding stuff here. Again, this came up reverse facing. We've got a Denver on the back uh, of this one. And uh, we've got ourselves a decent looking 1958. So no more nickels. Quick recap. We did come across a 1941S, a 1943 Philadelphia War Nickel, which is the real winner of uh, the hunt here. Anytime we find a war nickel in a nickel hunt, especially with just $60 worth, we get excited about it. I think I said earlier, I only find like one of those on every couple of hunts. So uh, very excited to have it. We had a 1946, 
1958. Actually, we had two 1946s. I don't know why he made his way down there. But uh, pretty cool. Both Philadelphias, I think. We had two Romanians, I think a 16 and a 17. And of course, I know I said the War Nickel was my favorite, but let's be honest, it's got to be this ABB washer. This thing's got to be worth some serious bucks at your local hardware store. Make sure you guys try to find these in all of your nickel hunts. I'm just teasing if you can't tell. But uh, anyway, thanks for the washer. All right, so let's get into these quarters. I am not going to get my books out because if you've been following my channel, you know that I have completed two full sets of quarter books from 1965 all the way to the current women's quarters. Well, all the way to the current women's quarters, except anything that's new coming out for 2023. And I might be missing the Denver uh, Tall Chief quarter. Other than that, though, we are 100% complete. And uh, I am always looking for super nice quarters that we can use to upgrade our albums. Of course, in our quarters, the other big things we're looking for are silver, so 1964 and earlier. We're looking for those San Francisco uh, business strikes as well as San Francisco proofs and proof silver. Um, outside of that, the next big valuable item will be our W West Point Minute Quarters, which were only found on the 2019 and 2020. Uh, those are going to be big finds. And then quarters have a ton of stuff to look for when it comes to mint errors, whether they be die chips or DDRs. Um, and we're also going to be hanging on to all of uh, our Bicentennial Quarters because there's a really nice DDO on those. And I do try to keep entire rolls of really, really nice ones. So uh, let's do two more rolls of quarters here on camera, just in case we get lucky and find some silver. I will, of course, go back looking for all the things that I just mentioned, and I'll bring you in as we find stuff. And I'll try to cover some values on these because a lot of the little errors are worth, you know, anywhere from one to call it two, three, four dollars on eBay. Some of them worth a bit more. I, I get asked quite frequently what are W quarters worth, and it's kind of come down over time, but typically you're going to find those W quarters have settled in kind of between about 10 and about 30 or $40, depending on condition and which particular design it's on. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and get through these. And if we find anything cool, I'll bring in. Otherwise, I'll hunt the rest of these rolls. And if I find something as I go through, like I did with the nickels, I'll bring you in and we'll talk about it. So just getting through that first roll, we're only, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 quarters in. And we've got our first die chip error on the 2022 Wilma Mankiller from Philadelphia. You can see we've got ourselves a little dye chip there up in her hair. I'm not even going to put it under the scope. You can see it. I've covered, in lot, covered it in a lot of my other videos. It's a very common error and really easy to find. As I said, I'll cover values for these at the end of the quarter hunt. So still getting through those first five rolls. Roll number four has netted us one of my favorite quarters to find, and it is going to be a uh, Balboa from 1993. This is a Republica de Panama, and I just love the design on the front of these. I just think they're really, really cool. And I've started a whole little tube of these guys as we find them. So I prefer the older ones from the 70s because they're a little bit more tactile. They're that's much more raised um, details on the front, but still a very, very cool looking foreign. It is one of my favorite to find. So we got five rolls up there, getting through rolls eight, nine, and 10 down here. And I'm bringing you in for another die chip that we're finding less and less of, but this is a really decent looking quarter. 2021 Philadelphia crossing the Delaware. And it's this little tiny die chip up here on the hat. You can see it there without any major magnification. Now these are, you know, they go for like a dollar or two maybe. I'll, I'll look at some eBay prices at the end of the video, but if you can find one that has the big die chip from the tip of the hat, it goes all the way to the back of the hat. It's called the Full Crown Air. Those can be worth a few bucks. And I do have one of my viewers, one of my subscribers, that said they've put one in the mail for me, and it may actually be at the post office box. So I'll be checking for that this week, and we'll do a little mail call if we find it uh, or if it comes in. But we're going to add this board as a, a t we're going to add this to the board as another error. So we're cleaning up roll number 15, and we've come across another error here. Of course, I've already seen it because you got to put this one under the microscope to see it. But this is the 2023 uh, Bessie Coleman quarter, and this is the uh, InQ's error, and I found this one very, very early when this coin was released, but you can see here we've got doubling in the um, EC letters. Now, it's InQ's because these are pressed down into the planchet, and we've actually got a ghosted set of ECs in here, and this thing can present itself a lot of different ways. Sometimes you can see it in triplicate. 
Sometimes the EC is way, way out here. That one's actually worth much more money than this one. Uh, but this was a pretty good example, so I wanted to make sure that uh, you guys got to see it. The other thing you always want to check on this quarter is for those big die chips up here on the biplane and here or down here on the lower wing. Some die chips can present there. Honestly, this quarter has a lot of little die chips. I found them up here in the fingers. People have found them in the eyes and down on the lips. Um, that's just post-mint damage right there from some strikes uh, during rolling. But uh, this is kind of a neat quarter. There are a number of errors on it. And again, we'll get into values a little bit later. So we are down to our last three rolls. And I have found the uh, 2008 Arizona Extra Cactus Error. And I feel like one of my quarter hunts without finding at least one of these would be a travesty. Because I find these all the time. Now, if you're curious what that means, like I said, I uh, looking through this roll, I had one earlier. So I pulled it out for comparison. So let's get this under the scope and show you where this extra cactus is. It's actually just a die chip error. It's down here underneath all of this madness under the, the, the uh, cactus here. And you'll see I've got a big hunk of metal covering up the uh, engraver's initials, which are JFM. So this little hunk of metal here is not supposed to be there. And because it's nice and nestled in with all these little baby cactuses here, and forgive me, I forget what they're called, but there's a name for those little cactuses in Arizona. And uh, so it's called the Extra Cactus Error. And I'll put the other one under the scope just so you can see the comparison here. You will see that when we get down here to the initials, you can clearly see the JFM. There's nothing in here. Now, this Extra Cactus can be huge. It can cover like three quarters. It can be almost this whole sort of section here. It can be a little sliver. A lot of the ones I find are a little oblong, almost a little football shaped in here where you can still see some of the initials, but keep your eye out for those. I do. I find one in almost every single hunt. Um, so usually once I find one, I don't call out any additional ones, but uh, it's just fun to find in your hunts. Well, let's wrap up these quarters and assign a value to some of this stuff. And I will be putting some eBay listings up here to support what I'm saying. And keep in mind, you can find eBay listings that sell for a little less. You may find some that sell for a little more. And obviously with all of these die chips, how big they are or how good a condition of the coin there is. And honestly, just how lucky you are in getting a sale, if you can get one, may drive a different price than I say here. So I'm just trying to give you a rule of thumb based on what I see today. Now, starting over here on the left, I did pull three Philadelphia Bicentennials, one Denver, probably not hanging on to too many of these because they weren't too nice. Uh, this Denver was checked for that double die obverse. That is a bucket list find for me. One day, hopefully, I'll find it because that's worth a good bit of money. Now, the Arizona Extra Cactus Error. This coin's not in great shape at all. I wouldn't try to sell this. I'll put it in a tube and hang on to it because it's just not in great shape. But typically, you can find that coin going for like $1.50 to maybe $3. Um, some people are getting shipping. Some are not. Now, there's some additional die chips on the back, like up here near the, the top of the two and the in the 2008 down there. And obviously the bigger the die chips and the more there are, the more you can command for that money or that coin. And again, condition matters. So one that's this ugly, this banged up, not going to be able to sell that for much, if anything. Now the Bessie Coleman uh, NQ's error, it presents itself a lot of different ways. I showed you guys this earlier in the video. I'll see if I can zoom in here. If you can see it just under the camera, not really. Um, Anyway, you can go back through the video and see the uh, when I put it under the scope. Now, that NQ's error, I mean, that thing was all over the place. We're talking typically like 2 to $3. Ones where that E and C were really ghosted really far away. I think there were a few uh, listings that sold out there closer to like 8 10 12 15 bucks. So, you know, again, high condition coin, really severe NQ's error. Uh, you may do a bit better. And something else, a lot of people think that is a double die reverse. So when looking on, on uh, eBay, you may want to look for NQ's error or DDR, and you'll find listings for that coin. Now, the crossing the Delaware, the die chip in the hat has been around forever. I don't find as many as I used to. This is actually a pretty nice looking coin. We've got some fingerprints on it, but in general, the condition of it's pretty good. Now, the size of the die chip, again, makes all the difference in the world. One like this on eBay, um, I, I saw for kind of like in that dollar, dollar fifty up to about three bucks. Again, some people charging shipping, a dollar or two, some people not. 
Now, I'll include in my image there the full crown air, and that's where the die chip covers the entire hat. Those are still going for $50, $60, $70. So that's a very high dollar coin. So if you find those, either hang on to them or you know what? Sell them quick because who knows how long they will continue to command that type of money. Look at the W quarters as an example. When they first came out, all of them were going for 20, 30, 40 bucks. Now certain designs have settled in around 10 to 12, maybe $15. Uh, the Wilma Mankiller die chip here in the hair, they're a dime a dozen. I find them everywhere. Uh, again, typically you're going to see these things going for a dollar or more. Now, I did see some crazy sales of this on eBay, like around six, seven, eight dollars. Perhaps you'll get lucky and get that, especially on a really nice quality coin. But uh, I would anticipate you getting a dollar or two if you can sell it. And of course, there's not a lot of value here. I just love these Balboas, they're so pretty. I love the design. So always excited to get me some uh, Panamanian half or uh, quarters. Love the half dollars more, but uh, the quarters are really nice as well. We didn't find any dimes in the hunt, so honestly, not a lot found for four hundred dollars and change. I did leave a couple of the the cool finds from the nickels, the war nickel, obviously a keeper, and it will go in the silver chest. We'll throw that in there after the video. Always nice finding a few interesting foreigns. I don't find a lot of Romanian coins. Again. I technically lost a nickel on these, but I still like finding the foreign stuff. And as I said earlier in the video, I mean, who doesn't love a nice washer from Home Depot or maybe Lowe's or Ace Hardware? Uh, but you know, whatever. If somebody needed the nickel that bad, I'm glad they got it. So with that, I'm going to close it out here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know. Drop on down below, leave a comment and click on that like button while you're down there. If you're new to the channel and you like coin roll hunts, make sure you click on that subscribe button. Click on that little bell and select all so you get notified each and every time I release a new video. Special shout out to my channel members. Thank you guys for supporting the channel each and every month. It means the world. I really, really appreciate it. Um, with that, I don't know what's going on. I'm home for the next week or two, so I'm going to hopefully get a little bit more content out. It's been thin here in the month of March, um, but hopefully I can get a few more videos out this month than last month or at least the first half of this month. So uh, look for more stuff from me. You can always reach out to me through comments. I've got my email in the description down below all my videos. And don't forget my checklist. If you're new to coin roll hunting, that thing's a great little resource. And with that, I hope you guys are doing well. Take care, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.